If you've been tuning into this show for quite some time, you'll notice that I report on the news, and that's a lot of what's happening in the outside world. However, we need to start bringing the news back to how it shapes and informs the body. I talk about solutions, I talk about the human at the end of just about every single show, but the real importance behind this is we are living in a rapidly changing world. We are also in a crisis period, which means the change is accelerating at an accelerating rate as well. And when any creature has an environment that is going through rapid change, that creature also changes in kind. Which means we are retrofitting an environment that is rapidly changing, but we are not educating the body on how to evolve at the same rate as our environment. This breeds disaster, historically, and our body needs to catch up. And there is ancestral wisdom inside of it. Why do I love the body? Vitruvius himself, a Greek historian and philosopher, said that our body is laid out in harmonics. The spacing between all the different digits that we have in our body, it shows us that we are a fractal of something that is mathematical, precise, but also able to move in artistic and unscientifically explainable ways. So with that, I need to bring our attention back to what is the body? Why is it so important? Why is the changing of the external world rapidly changing the body so much? And how do we grab the wheel of this runaway bus? It all comes down to that one system inside the body that connects every other system of your body called the fascia. So let's get into it. Smash the like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, share the video out far and wide, and take this microdose of infinity. You'll be fine. Just take it. Welcome back to Waking Infinity News. I'm your host, Ben Stewart. In this news show, I could be talking about Ukraine, but I'm not gonna. I could be talking about vaccine passports or the World Economic Forum, but why do that? I mean, Russell Brand's already covered it, and he's got 5 million subscribers, and he's saying the quiet part loud. I love this guy. So if you've been paying attention to the news at all lately, something is happening inside your body and your mind. It's obvious. Most of us just think it's the mind. But in fact, when you only report on the news that's outside of us, you're only giving people stuff that they can engage with with the mind unless you inform them and guide them on how to integrate it into the body. I would assume that many of you have some kind of movement practice and you like to keep yourself healthy in some way. But I would also assume that you do that by taking tips from the consensus world out there. And there's not really much consensus. There aren't many experts out there that are talking about how rapidly our world is changing and how the body can actually engage with it. Not with IQ, not with EQ, but with KQ, kinesthetic intelligence quotient. So now I'm going to show you a video by Thomas Myers. He's doing a talk at Google, and he's talking about how rapidly our world has been changing just in the past two generations. He puts it into perspective over the past 200,000 generations and exactly what kind of movement medicine we need. Let's check it out. For the first time in history, we're looking at a world that we create around ourselves that doesn't require us to move. Now, the, how does that sentence finish? That doesn't require us to move enough to stay healthy? Enough to stay in a really ideal state? We don't know, because we've never had a time in history that's like this, never ever. And as you guys move into the future, and we move into driverless cars, and we move into more and more things that our phones do for us, um, with us, then we have to think about, hmm, how do we educate kids to move? What is KQ? We're pretty good at IQ. We're beginning to learn about EQ, emotional intelligence. 
we haven't begun to map KQ, the intelligence of the body. And I'm pointing to the center of gravity of the body, what's known as the Dantian or Hara in martial arts. It is the center of your fibrous body, the center of your moving body. We don't know the topology even of kinesthesia and movement, and we're going to need to find out this century in particular, because this century in particular, we're going to find out how to change behavior. I'm going to suggest that there are five things that have really taken us away from nature, and one of them was standing up. That happened way back in paleo times, 200,000, not 200,000 years ago, 200,000 generations ago. Only 30,000 generations ago, we tamed fire. We depend on agriculture, which only came in 12,000 years ago or 600 generations ago. Your DNA has gotten 600 generations to get used to farm work and cultivated food. Over the last 20 generations or so, we started making things, the chairs that you're sitting on. In the last two generations, we have done the last step, well, I don't know if it's the last in history, but the latest for us, is stepping into a global brain, stepping into something else. So the body has to become something else. I'm too old and it's not quite far enough into this revolution to say what the body will become or what kind of physical education that we need. But it's probably not preparation for agricultural work. Only 3% of the population is on the farms anymore. And it's not even preparation for industrial work, which as you may have noticed is going south NAFTA or no NAFTA. We need to teach our kids to do original movement. Repetitive movement is no longer what we need. So we look at spatial medicine. Movement is food. Movement is medicine. What do we need in terms of movement? That's a great question. What do we need in terms of movement? That's actually a question that lies at the heart of the Awakening Protocols, which I'll be talking about March 20th on the Equinox at Gaia first thing in the morning. Super excited because I'm going to be laying out the awakening protocols for people in a way that I never have before. And that will really launch the way that this moves into the world and how we can talk about how the body really does need to move a little bit more. So now I want to bring your attention to a woman who basically a YouTuber who just shows myofascial unwinding. It's a technique made by John F. Barnes on how to use your intuition to unravel the slow process over time that we bind our fascia into through a sequence of intuitive listening on how the body wants to move, become supple, and untorque itself out of these holding patterns that are emotionally traumatizing holding patterns that we held on to in the past. Through our electricity, we hold it into certain parts of the body when we're tense. And then we calm down, but these parts don't calm down enough to release the water. It's, water is a liquid crystalline matrix and it's pushed through our fascia, but only when healthy. In unhealthy fascia, which can happen by sitting for long periods of time, it gets caught into the body. And once it gets caught, information doesn't move from there. So you will actually notice that when you do myofascial release or tremoring and shaking for long periods of time, you will actually loosen up and mobilize energy and water through these areas enough to where you can have emotional releases. You can actually go back and remember and in a sense, tap into the harmonic vibration of certain traumas. Your body intelligently does this. Like a gazelle, almost taken down by a leopard, then gets away. What does that gazelle do? It shakes and tremors to move the waters and to move all those chemicals and hormones that were released in the process of almost dying through the body so it can process. But what do we do? We sit down and we call our friends and we talk it out because we're highly intellectual. And we've lost a lot of our kinesthetic intelligence. So with that, this is a video of this lady showing the unwinding process and she gives an article by John F. Barnes to explain why this is so important. Let's check it out.
Everyone has their own unique pattern and speed of unwinding depending on their past traumas and injuries and memories stored in the fascial system. And during this process, sometimes memories, um, pictures, feelings, emotions may come up as well. You may hit uh, what we call still points, which are just pauses in the motion where your body is uh, remembering uh, that past trauma or injury. It may be helpful if you're just getting started with unwinding, uh, myofascial unwinding, to do it with a trained myofascial release therapist. I'm gonna read now from an article written by John F. Barnes called The John F. Barnes Myofascial Release Approach, Approach Part Two. Our survival mechanism. My experience has shown that when a trauma is too painful, too fearful, or so intense that we go into shock, our subconscious activates our survival mechanism and pulls our feeling intelligence out of our body. This survival mechanism numbs us so we can survive the ordeal. However, because science has ignored consciousness, most of you and your clients are trying to function or heal in the state of dissociation. In other words, your subconscious perceives that the truck is still crashing into your car. You are still falling down the stairs. The surgical knife is still cutting you or you are still being attacked. The subconscious tightens against the unresolved trauma like a broken record that plays all day and all night. It does not matter how intelligent you are, how strong you are, or how hard you are trying to get better. It is not on the conscious level. Ignoring the conscious as embracing patterns has thwarted healthcare's ability to help people truly heal. You cannot consciously control these subconscious bracing patterns and this chronic tightness throughout time begins to solidify the ground substance of the fascial system, creating and perpetuating structural fascial restrictions that result in pain headaches, and restriction of motion. Now stop right there. Holy shit. Your body is truly intelligent. It knows how to hold on to a memory, where to store it, and how to overcompensate for it, not to let it come back out. If only when we say intellectually we want healing, if only we could connect our intellectual intelligence with our kinesthetic intelligence. All right, let's get back to it. These holding patterns also create a state of mental and emotional hypervigilance and anxiety. Throughout many years, I've seen that nature wants us to learn from our experiences. However, when we have to dissociate to endure pain or to survive, we are left with a fragmented experience. Myofascial release, unwinding and rebounding allow us to access the tissue memory that creates and stubbornly maintains these subconscious bracing patterns so that resolution is possible. Myofascial release, unwinding and rebounding are the safe, effect, efficient and highly effective methods for releasing the structural fascial restrictions and subconscious holding patterns, hypervigilance and anxiety allowing the individual's self-correcting healing capacities to function properly. So what's so revolutionary about this, and the reason why I'm spending an entire episode talking about fascia again, and talking about how your body stores trauma intelligently through the fabric of the body. Your body is a divine instrument. I wouldn't even call it a technology. You are a stringed instrument. If you look at the fascia underneath the skin, it is a fiber optic intelligent fractal network that is set up for fiber optics. It can share biophotons created within the body and also any photons coming from outside the body at light speed inside the body. And it's made up of collagen, ground substance, and elastin. The ground substance is that which dries out when you don't move enough and causes for this malleable liquid crystalline matrix to harden into the shapes that you most often find yourself in. With proper hydration and proper movement and also proper mind entering into your movement repertoire, you can unravel the trauma that's happened to you without having to go into the intellect too much. This is what's so brilliant about your body. We are intelligent enough to do that. However, what stops us is we are in a holding pattern societally. So in order to help the holding pattern of how people are escaping real world external problems, they're escaping them in individual ways. And by addressing them individually, you will see a reconfiguration of how our holding pattern in societal function 
can actually augment itself to release. But here's the number one thing that I see will become absolutely necessary when people start using the awakening protocols is there is a way out and it has to start with the individual. Once that starts happening, it reaches critical mass. It doesn't need top-down organization. It organizes itself inherently and intuitively based upon exactly the resources and the people and the minds and it meets them where they're at. This is the artistic revolution that we absolutely need. So that's why I'm calling for it. If you're interested, Gaia, at the Gaia Sphere, when I'm talking on March 20th, you can either watch it streamed on Gaia, or you can still probably buy a couple tickets and come out to Boulder, Colorado and see me. 9 a.m. March 20th, you're going to want to see it. That's all I'm going to give for you today. Go over to benjosephstewart.com, become a member get all the exclusive content. You'll see some film work in there. You'll also see a lot of my deeper dives where I lay out a lot of stuff that most people are probably still a little anxious around. And that's why I want to give more of these kinds of episodes because I don't think we can tune out of what's really happening in the world. I still think we need to listen to Russell Brand. We need to listen to people who are speaking about these things, but we need to find some way to express it through the liquid crystalline matrix of the body so it doesn't hold itself there in this holding pattern where we believe the world is coming to get us. Because then even if the world changes and we evolve past this point and the world's not coming to get us anymore, if we're still in the holding pattern, we will create external boogeymen to go after without realizing that we are projecting old trauma into the now and not allowing for this holding pattern to heal itself. So the one thing that we are absolutely going to need is a process for societal healing, societal mourning, and also celebration. Three things that are actually imperative when you are losing something. The loss of our trauma actually feels like the loss of innocence, the loss of a child, the loss of something that we've invested so much energy and identity around. We need to mourn the loss of our trauma and step into the celebration of what's being born. So I'm going to get into that more over at benjosephstewart.com. Please sign up, become a member, get all that exclusive content. Join the Discord group. We're talking about a lot of incredible stuff there. And the community is coming and showing me links and, and turning me on to information that I really need. I use it to actually inform Waking Infinity News. So with that being said, I love you all. Thank you for showing up as usual, and I'll catch you all next time on Waking Infinity News.